Good evening, everyone. My name is Ruth. I am a New Zealand interpreter for five years. And besides that, I've been studying parallel uh, in psychology, and I'm now holding a master's in applied psychology with um, behavioral applied, uh, or we said behavioral analysis um, specialist. Tonight, we are going to share, uh, my, I'm going to share my experience in the health system. There is a fakatoki that I love it. I love uh, New Zealand fakatokis or set. They said, Naku teroru, na, nao teroru, ka ora ai te iwi. It means that with your basket full of food and my basket full of food, people will succeed. And this is what all interpreters are doing. We are helping uh, people, we are facilitating communication. So today we will talk face-to-face uh, -face learning speech difficulty. Let me talk about disorder with what depression and how to give a bad news. And something very little about telehealth and the new video remote interpreter uh, that we are doing based in my sign language interpreting uh, training that I had recently. So uh, the first scenario face-to-face is uh, learning about speech difficulties and assessment. So what happened? Uh, this first scenario is my part as I, when I was um, working, as I, I was called to be as an interpreter and we need to check whether a person uh, was already in a capability to learn. So what happened usually the schools when a child is already diagnosed with um, autism, to say, uh, in a teenager time, they have to to go pro primary to college. So we have to know whether they can go to the special school units or they can go in the mainstreams. So not uh, an, uh, a person with ASD or, or spectrum or this spectrum disorder is not always a person who cannot. Uh, words who cannot talk or cannot do nothing. They can be high functional and sometimes they are just, they have that sleeping moment. So as assessors, we go and get a test name, a B, BB map, which means verbal behavior milestone assessment and placement program. That program is to say, this person is 12 years old, okay? What this person can do in which in the learning category the person is. And it's not only academic, it's in general. The person can throw a ball, is able to, to receive, is able to have eye contact. So for that, usually we take like two, three months. And I remember that when I did that part, I, I, I was this part of my uh, qualification. I had to work with a person from India. And it was very challenging for me to, to know whether the the child was talking or not, because he was saying a lot of words. So I was, I said, said I should have a uh, an interpreter for the parents. They said no. She's just saying unintelligible words, but indeed she was saying words, but she was trying to pronounce. So uh, it is very important uh, that if we have an interpreter, if they call us for that, to us to help them. How can we help them? We have to be very, very focused in what we say. So we cannot uh, talk uh, like uh, to help the people. We have to get what they said. If they said what, we have to say what, all the what is not a war. We have to say that's not a war in our language, but it's war. So usually the specialist who you will be working with will be a speech therapy or an ABI therapist or an assessor who come to assess the person if, if they have really a, a, an issue, which is the RTLB, that's the Resource Teacher Learning and Behavior. There are a lot of challenge with this work because sometimes uh, you have to be in this, the house and the child would not uh, want to work because they want to work with parents or parents want to be there. And it is really, really hard, but the specialist we need to set the um, rules. If you find that there's too much noise, it's very hard for you to 
interpret, you have to tell. You also have to set some small rules that say it's very challenged. I will do my best, but it's challenged to listen because somebody else is talking. Some of the children want to talk small, very, very smooth. Some of them will not want to talk at all. Or some will start doing like um, the report. They will not do the report with the person who is talking in another language. They will start talking with you, getting that connection. And it's like a difficult for us interpreters when they say that we have to cut. We don't need to be together. We have to be different with a, with a client and we have to have a, a distance. In this case, no. In this case, although it's a, a a problem of learning or autism, we are not going to, to have a physical contact with a person, but we have to be humble. We have to, to smile. Our talk has to be very soft. So we, we change it. So can you please do this in a very smooth way so they can work with us? There is another is a scenario that usually in the kindergarten age that is apparently simple because parents are not around. And there is a lot of engage that the speech therapy will have with the child. But uh, again, the child will not listen. They will may listen to us. So uh, the speech that the children have in the kindergarten stage, especially, is very raw. So they said, instead of saying, I want water, they will say, water, bottle. We have to interpret that, what she's saying. And if we cannot do the prompting, prompting is like a helping them. So we can say, this is a bow. We cannot say that. The child has to say, because the child will forget, ah, bottle. So this is prompting, this is helping. Because it's an assessment, we don't do that. The specialist will tell us the requirement. Huh? So some uh, of this um, kindergarten age may be done in the, uh, in the space in the hospital or in the speech of the speech therapy. And that is a big problem uh, with um, parents around. The child doesn't know it's in a different environment and maybe will not want to work. So don't worry, leave this to the specialist, how they are going to manage. You just manage the child work. And if the parent cannot speak the language and want to communicate, you may assist in the moment. Is this there? And ask the the specialist what they want. Sometimes they 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 want to overprotect the child and stay there. So you just have to to work with that. I had remember one scenario of this that the child was um, a little bit upset. So what happened? The specialist and this time was the the lady from the RTLB uh, received the child seven years old and gave the child a toy. I said, oh, okay, it's a toy. So the child started playing. I was already uh, studying psychology and studying this part. And I said, oh, what a mistake. She, I may tell about the challenge that you can find with a child in a young child, especially when some of the space Specialist or the, not the specialist actually, but the assessor, the resort teacher, a learning and behavior a person uh, may not know exactly how to deal with learning disabilities or speech difficulties. So uh, what she did, she initially when the child was sitting in, in the place in the school, gave a toy, then said, well, to the child, we're going to do this, 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 and grab the toy out. So I realized that it was not correct that she should have talked first and the toy was gonna be a surprise. So what happened that the child started crying and the child didn't want to do nothing. And I was, I was left with the child alone. The teacher was so um, worried and tried to contact the parent because the child was not calming down. And I said in that moment, there is a child in distress here. I'm an interpreter, I should not, engage with a client, but it's a child. And I have to go over what uh, our ethics said. And I said to the child in my language, as we already told us, oh, come down, nothing is wrong, everything is okay. Uh, we are doing this. And so I repeated the same thing that the lady was telling. 
and the child cooled down. When the, the person returned, didn't find the parent, it's, we start doing the work. And the child didn't want to look to, to the person. She wanted to look at me. She made like a report and she would look at her with angry face. But I think that that worked fine. Because I facilitate something that they really needed badly to report, to the, to to check if the child has really issues, speech issues, which she had, but she was highly functional. About uh, difficulties with um, adults, there's another scenario that is the third one, that is aphasia assessment. Uh, this scenario is for uh, assessment of language for a 65 years old aphasia person. After a cardiovascular attack, say stroke, in normal words, but they call that cerebral, cerebral vascular attack will be the, the, the name, but we call brain stroke, and from this it produces aphasia. Aphasia is like, a, it's like the broca side of the brain, uh, the stop working or get damaged and you cannot produce sometimes worse. So uh, especially is required here really is a speech and language therapy. It's very important for them to do the assessment because after stroke, some people cannot uh, even eat, cannot drink water and they can have a shock. So we have to be there and we have to be like the children, very precise. We have to talk exactly what they, they said. We cannot help, we cannot prompt, because that will really mail the assess make the assessment failing. So it's very, very important to follow step by steps. The challenge is that a 65 years old person may not want to talk, may find it bad, may not understand, or they are not feeling well in the moment, or they don't like us. It can happen that I said, why somebody is here. In this part, we have to be very mindful. We have to check our own culture. So if it's a Latin American, I will treat them with so much respect. And like I am, um, that they are an elder, like Maori, they are I'm dealing with an elder person and I am a young fellow and maybe not I so much eye contact and not look like a pity or, or poor you. So that type of words that like we have to, to be very mindful is very, very important. Even if the other person said, oh, poor, I know that you poor thing. They maybe said the, the, the specialist. We are not going to tell the word, especially in Spanish, the poor thing. Because some people dislike that word. They will say, oh, I, you can maybe rephrase and say, we are sorry of what, of what you are facing now. S something a little bit different, but not be so literal when we talk, but when they talk, we have to be very specific and say the same thing that they say, whatever word, it's very important. And if they cannot follow, we have to inform that. Now, phone interpreter. So this client initially came to me uh, after a, a suicidal um, attempt and a, Beside that, she was refusing to take the medication and got the stomach bug. This person went to the hospital and the nurse said to her, the problem of your stomach bug, the problem of your stomach, I feel that, is because you stopped taking the medication. And the person looked very down. So I, yes, informed that was my duty to tell. It was in the, on the phone and I can feel, I didn't see the person, but I can feel how down was the other person. They said, the doctor will see you after one or two hours. So the JP came and again, uh, she started checking the results this time of the problem with the stomach and found that it was a stomach bug. And she said, oh, well, please tell uh, this, the patient that she has a stomach bug. That's the reason she feels bad. And if she doesn't want to take her medication uh, for the mental health, it is up to her. We you will just need to follow up. And it is, uh, we are here in New Zealand, nobody forced to take medication to nobody. So saying that, I knew that I was, I told two hours before the person another thing. 
So I said, shall I interfere or not? And I found that I had. So I told to the GP, said, I already told this person that the problem of her stomach was because of stopping the medication. This is maybe it's in the notes. Maybe the nurse has put it there. So the GP check and say, no, it's not. Please tell her in, the, in this case that the nurse was assuming that, but we have the result here. So it's nothing to be with stopping the medication and that we are going to follow up her. So it was like something that I said, shall I interfere? And I interfered and it worked fine. Now also the person was claiming that she has a problem in the nose, some skin, sober, the skin issue over her nose, and she made a referral for the hospital. So the third session came in the hospital after two or three weeks. Uh, they, during that time, the person was saying, oh, okay, the doctor, the specialist came and was very cool in her way to talk. It was her style. So she said, oh, okay, let me, let me check and start checking the nose and say, oh, this is cancer. So come on Wednesday to do a biopsy. I thought in that moment, if I just give the person that bad news that it is cancer and even has not been uh, tested properly, was not going to be good. The person was going to go out and maybe jump out of the of whatever window or whatever stairs because she was suicidal. So what I said is in a different way, I said like rephrase, it looks like it might be Oh, sorry, I didn't say it like that. He said, to this car, to check that this is not cancer, we need to do an, a, bi a biopsy this Wednesday. Please, we need you to come. And immediately I told the specialist, I said, I have told her that to this car that, that she has cancer, and she has to uh, return. And in that moment, she said, oh, yes, 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 because I think that is cancer, but it really is not. I don't know if it is or not. So that is the problem that I found and I said, oh, thanks God, I was I was brave enough to tell. These are that I found myself with between ethics and advocacy for the person. There's some research that I think I, I put it in the end of my presentation that you guys got, that you can see that part, but it's very, very important. Now about the last uh, topic will be the telehealth. Uh, most of you may know that video remote interpreter is starting, um, a, as they said, this year, we don't know exactly, but it's ready to go. So uh, it was through, after the plan of the telehealth for New Zealand, uh, they started in 2017. There have been a number of telehealth um, programs. So now uh, we have to go with our uh, video remote interpreter and the expectation of the agencies is that we have to have a good computer system, equipment, internet, and a nice environment where we sit and that without noise and things. Like today, you saw that we have some problems with the technical to put my PowerPoint. We may face, we are going to face those things and understand that maybe the other person that is in the remote area may not be able to to connect but for our side we should do it i have had a scenario uh, it was a training with the side language people in AUD. so we were doing in collaborate in that scenario i was the specialist so i act as the as the a, how can I tell, as the assessor. And one uh, girl was doing uh, sight language training and there was another scenario that a young child had to contact us. It was challenging because it was like, like the person, I was saying something, I can see the person in the sight language telling things and I could understand because sometimes we can, although I, I'm not specialist in that in sight language. And I was like, ah, okay, in the middle that she was talking, I was interfering. I don't know it's happening with your languages. A lot of times when I am interpreting in Spanish, there's a lot of people that 
they know already that the English speaker know already uh, Spanish and cut me in the middle. In the, in the, I'm not allowed to finish what I have to say and it stay like, like it led me in the limbo. But I found the same with the scenario with the sight language that that will, that will happen a lot because maybe people understand, maybe people will not understand or maybe will be cut like my voice was cutting now. So we have to be ready for that. Uh, I think that it's going to be in the future, not only in health, but also I was uh, I watched a video in transnational uh, page in, in Facebook uh, for the Ministry of Justice in the States, I think. So we might have that in the future. But for now, we are ready for the BRI or video remote interpreter. Uh, I think that the 20 minutes has passed. Are we having uh, questions and answers? That's my PowerPoint. You will find the reference for this um, uh, presentation, but also uh, useful links of all the which I have been talking. I suggest you to go to the telehealth because they have their webinars that how this will be working within New Zealand. And there is a new uh, plan for interpreters that is going to be a change. And they call the MBI Resource Reference Training Manual. Uh, and there is a small a small diagram that is a, the project uh, diagram that I may suggest you to, to do it. And something about autism and how we do the BB map, speech therapy and so on. Hmm? Uh, Carolina is asking this, how do I, how do I cope with unknown difficult medical specialist glossary when interpreting or when you don't remember a, specialty, uh, a specific term? Well, I, in, uh, it has happened a lot of times and in both sides of the language, either in Spanish or in English. And I ask the, the person who, who was saying to explain me, say, oh, sorry, can you explain? Uh, what does it mean exactly? Because it, it just, you can know a lot of things, but we are not medicals. So most of the normal thing we know, but there, there's some terminology, for example, in Latin America, that in Colombia they will say in a way, and in Peru they will say it, and in Spain it's another way. So if we ask, then we can get and, and describe what what is exactly. And this is what I am doing. I'm very open to tell. If I am on the phone, it's very easy, I may tell you. In the phone, I usually have my iPad with me and I write my notes in the iPad. So what I do is I put it immediately, the word, and it can come. So it's easier for me. Otherwise, I just ask, be honest. Okay, thank you very much, Ruth. Do we have any other final questions before we wrap up for today? Okay. Coming through for the PowerPoint, Ruth, so I'll deal with that later. Yeah. Namiji, thank you. Muchas gracias. And let's, uh, I wish uh, all of you a happy 2021, a better year. We have to say we did it. <laughs> thank you very much, Ruth, and we appreciate your time and your expertise. Uh, we'll also put a recording of this webinar on the Facebook and on the website for future people to look at as well. Thank you, thank you. Everyone, you have a good evening and thanks again, Ruth. Yes. Bye bye.